Hey everybody, Duke45 here. Thanks for joining me for Night Ops Month. This is our first video of the month, so we're going to get started with the review here uh, in just a second. But first I wanted to get into exactly what are Night Ops, or what is Night Ops. And it, it's nighttime warfare, you know, night operations. And at first glance you might not realize it's very different from regular daytime warfare but it is it is a specialty it is something that it requires a different skill set than your you know regular um, daytime operations it relies a lot on technology and it also relies on psychological warfare which I don't think people really understand um, the absence of light and this comes from many of the you know commanding officers that I was reading about um, say that when when it's dark you know, the lights go out the loss of a vision it changes a soldier's psychological state um, instinctively fear kicks in immediately uh, perceptions start changing there's a, a, a natural pessimistic outlook that occurs when you lose that uh, that vision, that ability to see, you know, your surroundings and possible targets. So automatically retaining control of the forces uh, becomes extremely difficult. And this is a recurring theme from all the commanding officers that I read from, um, as well as the uh, ability to determine sounds, sources of where shots may be coming from. I read a story about in uh, Japan, there was a a battle going on and uh, they didn't they couldn't see but they immediately retreated uh, they perceived the noise in the water to be thousands of soldiers oncoming but it turned out to be ducks and the sounds the ducks made in the water uh, led the soldiers to believe that they were heavily outnumbered and they retreated so you can then see where the psychological warfare aspect comes into it where you're, you're playing mind games to create a negative outlook for your enemies put them in a state of feeling like they cannot win the fight and that gives you another advantage um, if you're looking for a classic example of a night ops success story think Batman Batman is completely night ops he relies on technology and he relies on psychological warfare so I, I would argue Batman is probably one of the more famous night ops specialists in the world um, yeah, instilling that that whole disadvantage in your enemy's mind is is big. You know that can lead to an advantage for you. And GI Joe's Night Force team specializes in night operations in those fields, technology and psychological warfare. So what I'm going to be doing with the, the reviews of the GI Joe figures is showing you how these specific figures fit into that, and how they play into GI Joe's night operations dominance. So we'll get that started right now, and here comes the review. Hope you enjoy. All right, here is Muskrat, G.I. Joe's Swamp Fighter, and a Jungle Warfare Specialist. He is part of Night Force, and his function with Night Force is specifically swamp fighting and jungle warfare. Uh, that may not seem like a big deal, but to have those specialties, then you've been trained on relying on other senses aside from sight. You know, in the jungle and in the swamp, you have to be able to hear, you know, feel, and, and even use your sense of smell to put you out of danger or help track down people who you might be looking for. With that function, Muskrat has the ability to help his teammates and help himself. Uh, this particular figure is version 4 of Muskrat. He's from series number 29 and originally he was available at JoCon 2013. The convention was titled Nocturnal Fire. Um, he's based on the version 2 of Muskrat from 1989, which was also a Night Force figure. Um, Night Force was a Toys R Us exclusive, and basically 
Um, the our Toys R Us got the figures from 1988 and slapped darker colors on them, branded them Night Force, and that's how we ended up with the Night Force sub team. Um, let's take a look at Muskrat's file card to give you a little bit better description of the man himself. All right, Muskrat file name Ross A. Williams. Primary military specialty infantry. Secondary military specialty is social services. Birthplace is Thibodeau, Louisiana. Grade is E4. Now it is worth mentioning that um, the ranking of E4 doesn't necessarily translate into G.I. Joe's ranking. G.I. Joe itself does not um, rely on the rankings of the troops in their regular fashion. So just because he's an E4, E4 doesn't mean that he couldn't be, you know, commanding sub teams or whatnot. Uh, Muskrat spent his formative years up to his knees in one Louisiana swamp or another, hunting raccoon, possum, and wild pig. He was able to hold his own against poachers, gator skinners, moonshiners, escapees from the chain gangs, and smugglers. Army Ranger School and JWTC, which is Jungle Warfare Training Center, seemed like summer camp to him. When he was tapped for night force duty, he was sent to Advanced Night Warfare School. By the time he graduated, he was teaching the experts a thing or two about nighttime swamp fighting. So they're painting a picture of somebody who's at home in the swamps, who's just comfortable in that setting and is able to spend large amounts of time there and not feel out of place at all. Uh, that's definitely not me. I don't want to go into a swamp, whether it is dark, light, or anything in between. Uh, it goes on to say, from Lieutenant Falcon's files, Lieutenant Falcon being the commander of Night Force. It says, if I had to go chase down Muskrat in the swamp at night, I'd give up before I started. He'd be sprinkling cayenne pepper in his tracks to throw the dogs off, laying false trails into water moccasin layers, rigging deadfalls, setting snares, and having himself a good old time, never even working up a sweat. I'd just as soon go home and watch a football game on TV. So... The original file card, uh, that didn't say it was from Lieutenant Falcon's file. So they basically, for the, the subgroup here, they just added from Lieutenant Falcon's files to the regular file card of the character to make it seem like it was a you know subgroup specialty comment. So they're saying right here that Swamp Rat is, is, is very useful in a swamp jungle situation. Um, and as I mentioned before, that's why he is valuable to the team. He is able to use some of those skills learned for, you know, jungle and swamp combat and apply them to non-jungle and swamp combat situations. Um, let's go ahead right now and, and get a closer look at the figure itself. All right, so here we have him. As you can see, there's a decent amount of detailing on the figure. So first glance, he has a blue hat. It's kind of a deep blue. It's not too dark. Um, it's got a black. I guess you'd call it some kind of tie or just a you know, ribbon. Not ribbon, but just kind of a thing to hold it on there. Um, same blue is on his vest as well, which has black, gray, and green. And that green is, uh, it looks like a bit of an olive drab color. The vest is removable as well. And here's his arm articulation. No sleeves at all for him. He's showing off the guns. Uh, the range of motion on him is excellent. He does have the ability to move the arms all the way up. Um, on the hands themselves, the wrists swivel, or turn in 360. They do not have the wrist hinge, which I, I love on figures, but unfortunately uh, he does not have it on here. And that obviously translates to both hands. Further down, he has sculpted on pocket on the left leg. And on the right side, he has a sculpted on um, pistol holder. And he's got a spot also on there for the uh, silencer, which does connect onto the gun. 
a sheath for the knife and then he has the olive drab and black boots as well um, again the knife is removable on him so that is a look kinda at what you're getting with muskrat um, there is something I do want to point out here which is is worth mention and let me remove the vest I can show you that it's removable sometimes you have to pop the head off on some of these which can seem a little scary to do but you know it is something that is done to help make it a little easier and I'll just do that real quick um, make it a little easier to get some of the equipment off so we've got the figure here and I'll put the arms up so if you look at the back of Muskrat and I'm gonna see if I can get a better shot of that so you can see that in focus maybe I'll put it upside down here you can see the black line and when I first got this figure I was a little concerned I thought perhaps it was defective or broken but that's supposed to be there that is the c connection between the front of the torso yeah there you go and the back of the torso um, it is it's normal all the figures are connected like that but because he's um, you know kinda has a sleeveless shirt on it's a little more pronounced but that is uh, normal perhaps it would have been a little bit better paint job would have hit it better would have hidden it better um, but whatever the case is that is not the one and that's not what mine has but anyway that's normal so if you do have this figure um, no need to freak out that is um, supposed to be there um, let's go ahead and take a look at his accessories right now. So let's have a look at the accessories that Muskrat comes with. To start, we have a gray shotgun, followed by a what would be considered a pocket knife, although this one sheaths into his right ankle, and then a much larger machete, which is standard issue for anybody who's a swamp fighter a gray pistol with a removable silencer and he has the pockets for both of those um, a blue boonie hat or giggle hat depending on whichever you like to call it and then this pretty cool looking blue vest that has the olive drab accents to it um, I don't know it's a really good color combination I really like it and that's the gear he comes with so uh, let's get him all geared up and show you what he looks like when he's ready for action All right, so here is Muskrat, all geared up. And the nice thing about him is that he does hold his weapons. Yeah, all the weapons he came with, all the accessories he came with, he's got them right now. Um, his hands do hold them nicely. And that is nice, especially for modern figure collectors. A uh, source of our frustration is the fact that some of the guns that they come with just don't even fit, which makes no sense. But um, that's just kind of one of those things that it is what it is. Um, so he's holding his shotgun right here. Holds it well. Machete on that side, wearing his uh, boonie hat. Now, um, I, there is a, a slight, I don't know if I'd call it an issue or not, but I probably want to point it out. Because he doesn't have that wrist joint articulation where you can bend the wrists out, when you want to pose him like this with his gun, Unfortunately, it can put a lot of stress on the um, wrists here or on the gun itself. As you can see, there's actually a stress mark on the plastic. And that's only from you know, having the gun posed in this manner um, and the hands trying to pull it. So uh, you know, as you, if you have one of these and you try to position them like this, then yeah, you can run into, and there's a, a good look at one of the stress marks on the on the gun right there so I, I would call that a drawback any one of these figures that has this type of wrist to me it's and you can see the bending right there of the of the hand joint if you can catch that so that is a drawback for these figures that don't have the uh, bendable hinge inside the wrists but he does hold it it still looks it looks good but for me you know for, for posing him like this I really don't want to put any extra stress on the figure or the accessories so that that is a drawback for me um, another thing I, I, I kinda failed to mention was the, the head articulation it does go in a full 360 but it suffers from only slight up and down now it does have some up and down which is better than 
you know, some of the other figures, but it's only slight up and down. Um, holds the machete, fine, no problem on that. Um, he has the uh, the pistol with the silencer, and I'm just going to position that so you can get a look at that. So here is the silencer. Now you probably can't see it on the camera, but there is a tiny little hole right there. I'll try and back it up a little bit. Yeah, you're probably not going to get on there, but there is a tiny little hole there. And what that does is it just slides right into the end of the pistol, which has a little peg on the end there. You slide them together, and it's basically like putting on the uh, the silencer, just like that. It's a nice feature to be able to take the silencer off, especially you know if you're into making action figure photography. Um, stuff like that. It's it's nice to have that ability. However, the the silencer gets lost super easy. Now I know he's got the slot for it right here on his on his pants on the pocket there, uh, right off the holster, and it, it stays in there pretty well. But you hold him upside down, and it can pop right out and be gone forever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and the last thing is he's got this knife which goes in pretty tight on the uh, on the right leg. I'll pop it out there, but that's what you're looking at with the knife. Just a, I don't know if I'd call it a Bowie knife, but it's, it doesn't have any, you know, serrated edges, but it's just a knife, whatever the case is. Um, and then the hat, it doesn't jam on, but it, you know, it can stay on pretty well. It's a good look, though. I, I would much rather it be a removal, removable hat than have it fixed on there, so... Um, even though it doesn't jam on there, you know, I'm okay with that. But that's okay because sometimes, you know, if the hat goes on too tight, it can mess with the paint. So, um, all right. So with that and all the gear that we've seen, why don't we take a look at uh, Muskrat in action and see uh, see what that looks like. so there was Muskrat handling some business um, if you want to buy this figure you can find him on eBay he's not too hard to find but he is not cheap um, I haven't seen him these days anyway you know as of October 2018 um, I haven't really seen him for less than 50 um, if you are interested in this figure and you see him for less than 50 that's, that's that would be less than the current going rate for him um, I also probably wouldn't recommend spending over 70 because it, you can certainly find it for less than that. So if you are interested in this figure, you might just need a little bit of patience, but you should be able to get them for a relatively uh, decent price. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll give you the final grade here for Muskrat. so there's the final grade on muskrat thank you guys so much for watching our first video for night ops month and next week we will have cobra shadow guard thanks for watching i hope my voice doesn't stay like this well that'd be okay if it did later